Now, if you feel like the devil has been robbing from your finances, I want you to stand up. Last week, we talked about uh, breaking the spirit of robbery against our finances. And we talked about how the Amalekites went out and they robbed the threshing floors in the days of Gideon in Judges chapter 6. It was the Amalekites and the Midianites that came and robbed the harvest. In uh, 1 Samuel chapter 30, it was the Amalekites that came down and they robbed David's camp when he was out fighting the Philistines, fighting the battles of the Lord. The enemy came in and just wiped out his camp and took, took everything hostage uh, took everything as a spoil, and if you feel like the enemy's been taking things as a spoil, I want you just to uh, take a picture of the screen, or I want you to go home and get some scriptures that you can war with. I want you to look at this in Proverbs chapter 8. It says, with me, say with me, are riches and honor, enduring wealth and prosperity. My fruit, wisdom is saying, my fruit is better than fine gold. What I yield surpasses choice silver. I walk in the ways of righteousness along the paths of justice. Listen to what God's wisdom will do. Bestowing wealth on those who love me and making their treasuries full. I want you to say, God will make my treasuries full. Come on, say it again. God will make my treasuries full. Proverbs 10.22 says the blessings of the Lord make rich, and he adds no sorrow with it at all. Exodus 22.7 says when you catch a thief, he must restore double. Isaiah chapter 61 verse 7 says for your shame, you get double honor. And for your confusion, you get to rejoice in your portion. In your land, say in my land, you will possess double. Say, I will possess double. And everlasting joy shall be yours. Say, shall be mine. Hallelujah. Let me give that to you in the Message Bible. It declares this. Because you got a double dose of trouble and more than your fair share of contempt, your inheritance is in your land will be doubled and your joy will go on forever. Come on, let's just release a shout to the Lord. We are shouting victory and we are taking back all that the enemy has stolen in Jesus' name. Amen. You can be seated. Now, remember last week I encouraged you to, to file a robbery report. Seriously. How many did that? How many actually wrote some things down? Okay, like one person listens to me preach. I'm feeling like a failure, guys. You're going to have to help me here, okay? How many will go home and start taking stock of what the enemy has stolen from you, your family, your health, your finances, your blessings? Come on, and let's file a robbery report. Actually, you can do it while I'm preaching. I'm going to let you multitask. I'm not telling you text with your friends. I'm saying make a list of what's been stolen from you, okay? Because today what we're going to talk about is how the enemy has not just tried to rob our prosperity, but how he's tried to rob our posterity. Not just because it rhymes with prosperity, okay? Some of you maybe don't use this word posterity. Let me show you what it means. It actually means the future or the succeeding generations. The future or succeeding generations. It means our legacy, Something that's handed down from a predecessor. How many have a predecessor in Jesus? Come on, maybe you didn't have good parents that handed you down anything good, but I'm telling you that when you're grafted into the bloodline of the cross, you got all kinds of inheritance, richness of inheritance that comes to you. Amen? So you've had something that's handed down to you. It also involves your seed. In Genesis 22, God said to Abraham, he said, uh, he said, uh, in blessing I will bless you, and multiplying I will multiply you, and I will cause your descendants to, uh, to uh, inherit, to, to possess the gates of the enemy, and in you all the nations of the earth will be blessed. That's your natural seed and your spiritual seed. If you've ever planted a seed, it can be that seed too. Because here's what the enemy wants to do. He wants to cut off your posterity. There has always been a war against the generations. As a matter of fact, it goes all the way back to Genesis chapter 3 when God said, I'll put enmity 
to the devil. He said, I'll put enmity between your seed and her seed. Who is her seed? Not just the woman, but the church. Come on, I'm going to put hatred between your seed and her seed. I will tell you that the enemy would love nothing better than to rob from your family, to rob from your marriage, to rob from your children, to rob from your children's children, and cut off the blessing that God has declared. Psalms 145 says, one generation will praise your works to the next. I want you to focus here for just a second, though, on Isaiah 58, 12. Because I just felt this scripture just burning in my heart for the generations. It says this, those from among you shall build the old waste places. How many of you can see some old waste places in your city? How many of you see some old waste places in your own family? How many believe that there's some old waste places in this nation? Or maybe a nation you're called to pray for. The scripture says, those from among you shall build the old waste places. You shall raise up the foundations of many generations. And you shall be called the repairer of the breach, the restorer of of streets to dwell in. Who would have ever thought that the United States of America would so need a repairing of a breach? Would so need to see our foundations, our righteous, godly foundations that were laid hundreds of years ago in this land. Who would have thought that we would need to see those things restored? But God said, I'm looking for those among you who will be willing to rise up and to begin to build the old ancient waste places to restore the foundations, to repair the breach, and to restore streets that we can live in. How many believe God wants to restore generations? God wants to bless our, the older generation. God wants to bless our children's generation, our children's children's generation. And for some of you, your children's 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 generation. Come on. We actually um, have four generations in this church with, um, in our family. Bishop Hammond, who's going to be 83 years old this summer. Ha. He traveled over 200,000 miles last year, went to 14 nations was in so many sittings, going strong for the Lord. And I I want you to put out of your mind this picture of one generation passing a baton to the next generation. You know, because you know what that kind of sounds like? It kind of sounds like we're just going to kind of run along until Bishop's ready to pass the baton. No, 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 no. We're going to run with him. And our children's generation are going to run with us. And our children's children's generation are going to run with us. And we're going to see a generational synergy that is building as generations are running together. 